everyone back with a new video and in today's video I am revisiting the aesthetic generator that I did last year. Gothic Farmer. Oh my gosh and I could see it being like little overalls like a black blouse made of like floral print. I think that would be fun. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Obviously I am doing the Gothic Farmer look because I was really tickled by that last time, but I had just done a gothic cottage core, and I felt like they were too similar to do back to back, so I am going to be doing it now. <laughs> and I'm going to be revisiting an old pattern. I am going to be doing this Simplicity 8447. I'm going to be doing the overalls, because what is a farmer without overalls? And then I am also going to be doing the blouse. I'm not going to do the hooded version because I don't really wear hoods. I'm just going to do the regular button-up version. And I'm going to just say I really like this pattern a lot. It works up really quickly and it fits really nicely, or at least the ones I made did. I made two overalls last year for under $5 because they were all a bunch of remnant fabrics that I made all that stuff out of. So I didn't have quite enough to make a full size and they were snug back then they don't fit now <laughs> so I would really like to have a pair of overalls that actually fits and I can do stuff in it the intention was to be able to paint and do my gardening and do all my like dirty work in it and I had the perfect fabric for both of these things so technically this is gonna be a free project because I was gifted all the material it's like the sewing gods looked down upon me and was you can have this. I see you want to make something, but you don't have the materials. Here you go. So I am going to be using this cotton ducking that a coworker gave to me. It is a Walmart brand, I believe, or at least when I looked it up, it came from Walmart, but it's a, there's a ton of it. So I think this will be perfect along with this cotton Batiste. It's very lightweight. Cotton dark floral. I don't normally like dark florals. Again, this was gifted to me and I was going to use it as a mock-up material because I don't wear any dark florals, but it will be perfect for my gothic farmer look. And as a blouse, I think it will be lovely. I need more dark blouses. You might notice that neither one of these materials are black or gothy. The dark floral, I, was, I would give that a pass because not all goths wear all black, but I mean, a dark floral, I can see a goth wearing, you know? But obviously the brightly colored stripes on a white fabric, that's definitely not, that definitely doesn't scream goth to me, so I'm actually gonna be dyeing that black. I'm cutting off a little portion of the floral fabric to test it out in the dye bath. I like how dark it is now. I'm not sure I would like it if it's more dark, so I'm just testing that. Here is how the stripe turned out. I think it turned out really nice. Obviously, you can still see the blue and green stripe colors, but it's on a very, it's very muted. And I think it looks really good. I think it's gonna pop really well. I also threw in some of these acrylic buttons. Uh, these are the buttons I think I'm gonna use for the blouse. If not, I have other buttons to choose from. I just thought these would be really cool if they were just slightly darker. And obviously the buttons didn't take any of the dye. These ones here are dyed. These ones over here are baseline. So it is what it is. I figured they might not dye, but I thought, you know, I'll give it a try in case they do. It'd be great if they did, but no biggie if they don't because I have other buttons. I have tons of buttons. Well, well, I think I am ready to get started, so let us begin. For the blouse, the cutting phase was pretty straightforward. I had plenty of fabric, though I always try to practice efficient pattern placement. I decided to forego a mock-up because with modern patterns, the larger sizes tend to fit pretty well from the start, with very minimal adjustments needed. My only real issue here was finding a big enough fabric weight to make sure the material doesn't shift. Perfect.
I even have enough left over to add back into my materials pile. The only thing left is to cut out the interface and I can move on to the overalls. But not before a brief cat intermission. So before I can cut the overalls, I have to resize the pattern. Like most modern patterns, this pattern came in multiple sizes on one tissue. When I made these in 2021, I cut size 18, but here in 2023, I need a size 24. Fortunately, most of the pieces I was able to cut out in a larger size as they were attached to different sizes. It was only the back leg and the upper back panels that were attached to the size 18 and got cut off back in 2021. So I resized those pieces on draft paper while trying to break my floor tiles. With that sorted, I have my pattern gremlin to cut all the pieces out for me. They do such a good job. I really should consider the idea of starting to pay them. I begin my sewing journey by tediously serging all of the overall pieces as cotton ducking has a high fray quality. Fabric prep is simultaneously satisfying yet boring. It's satisfying to watch the raw edges get trimmed and encased, but also very boring as it doesn't feel very progressive. Despite how fun it looks to do, once everything is surged, I am still technically no closer to having a finished garment. After the great surge of 23, I place my pockets. Now the pattern only calls for one pocket of each size to be cut and placed, but I believe more is more when it comes to pockets, so I cut two of both sizes. Placing the big pockets in the front and saving the small ones for the bib later. I top stitch two rows around the pockets and reinforce the corners, which will be a delight to rip out later. Until then, I remain blissfully unaware as I sew the leg tubes together. which is also kind of tedious. I attach the button flap to one side opening and go over it in a close understitch before trying it on. Here is when I realize that I've made the grave mistake of giving myself a front butt. Overall, these overalls fit pretty good, albeit the legs are a little long because my legs are a little short. However, that can be easily fixed so long as my back and front butts are covered, I am happy. After ripping out the pockets, I pin them in a more useful and less posterior looking fashion. Next, I join the back panel to the front panel, forming the bib. In an effort to not give myself a chest butt, I only put one pocket on the front as the instructions show. I'll add the other smaller pocket to the pants as a bonus pocket. Next, I fold and top stitch around the bib facing, then making the strap by surging the sides together. And pin the straps to the bib before placing the facing on top. I notch the curves and do a tight understitch. Now I add the waistband to the bib then add the waistband to the pant legs. Now comes the fun part of finishing work. I start with the cuffs that I never tailored to fit my little legs. This will later be redone, taking off another four inches or so. Luckily, I had three hours to kill getting my car serviced. It gives me just enough time to restitch the cuffs and add the buttons, and then hand work just under a dozen buttonholes. Now for the shirt, I begin by sewing the pleats and gathering the fabric at the shoulders. Then I iron everything flat with the center back pleat ironed open. After basting those down, I attach the shoulders together, making sure the gathers look vaguely even and surging the seams to keep the bulk down. I give it a quick top stitch as well. Speaking of top stitch, I top stitch around the seam of the upper and lower back box pleat because I thought it would look nice. I make the pockets in the same manner as the overall pockets. 
by stitching the top facing to the wrong side, clip the corners and notch where the two layers meet so the edges can be tucked under when I turn it inside out. I think this is a very silly way to make pockets, but that's how the instructions say to do them, so that's how I'm doing them. I think they came out better this time, but I still don't like this style of pocket making. Next time, I'm going to do a different method. After attaching the pockets, I work on the collar. I stitch the two collar pieces, then serge the edges, and very narrowly serge the whole thing closed. But I remembered at the last minute to pull the collar inside out and sharpen the corners before serging the remaining raw edge. While I'm here, I also searched the entire collar edge on the shirt. I'm not sure why my neck lining ended up so big, but I serge off extra and pretend I'm good at this. No one else will know. Also, my hand looks miniature from this angle. I fold the inner lining edge and top stitch. Next, I pin the collar to the shirt, and then after doing that, I remember that I wanted the top stitch to the collar edges. So I unpin only the ends and run it through the machine before attaching the whole thing together. Then I sandwich the collar and lining together. I clip the curves and do a tight understitch under the collar. Lastly, I sew up the side seams before remembering I wanted to serge the raw edges. Rather than simply unpicking the side seams and making my life easier, I sew the edges and pray to the craft goddess that I don't catch the second layer under my needle. I need the raw edges serged separately so I can finish them by folding and top stitching along the bottom. I decide I don't want to make the same mistake twice, so I serge the side edges of the sleeves before joining them together. Now I can roll the mini placket for the cuff without incident. It's so tiny! Next, I gather the cuff edge of the sleeve and work the gathers evenly around the cuff band. I sew them together and clean up the edges with my serger. Then fold and pin the cuff in place for hand sewing later. Next, I gather the top of the sleeve and do my very best to ease it into the shirt armhole with minimal ruffles and pinched fabric. I take a brief cat intermission before attaching the other sleeve. And despite Sir Paul's help, the sleeve came out surprisingly well. Stop. 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 Next, I search the raw edges, and all that's left is the buttons and hand sewing work. So my outfit is ready to reveal. There you have it, another project down, and I gotta say, it's just so stinking cute. I absolutely love it, which is 
surprising because when I was making it, I was like, I don't think I'm gonna really like this when it's done because I didn't test out this pattern. I just went from a size 18 to a size 24. I don't know if it's gonna translate very well. And you know, I actually think it did a pretty good job. Like it, I was afraid that it was gonna be super baggy and shapeless on me, which I don't know, you might think so, but I don't think so. I think this fits quite nice. I do like the way the back is. The upper back here is kind of loose, but it's also overalls and I think they're supposed to be kind of loose, you know? Have enough room to do your squats. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily <laughs> go together, but you know, if you're doing farm work, who cares? Maybe it's because I make all my trousers out of vertical lines and wide legs, but I always feel very short and stumpy in them. So what crosses my mind is, you kind of look like a 50s lesbian. <laughs> I'm not saying that's a bad thing, it's just what goes through my brain. Anyway, I do really like how it came out. I actually don't mind how visible the stripes are. I might consider re-dyeing it and trying to make it darker, but even if it doesn't get any darker than this, I think I'm okay with the stripes. And I do actually really like how this blouse came out. I think it will go really nicely with other high-waisted skirts that I have, namely the black one, you know the one. <laughs> and I really like this. I feel kind of rosy, the rivetery. And I was really happy I was able to use a bunch of mismatched buttons. I have so many buttons, almost all of them don't match. So having the opportunity to use a bunch of my larger mismatched buttons was great. And I'm so happy to have done this project because I've been thinking about it for the last several months, pretty much since I did the aesthetic generator. And so I'm just happy to have this thought now out in the world and have it exist. So I'm happy. I hope you're happy. I hope you like this video. And if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing as I release a new video every other Sunday and occasionally some bonuses in between. And until next time, you have a good day. Bye. Why do you mess with things? Seems really lopsided. Wow. Wow, you're real stuck.